All right, hello, 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 folks. I am back here at the easel again today. Think about that. Here I am. All right, so I'm going to just do something and see if this will help folks out. I've had some requests for how I do grass. So let's start. We're just going to put some blue up here on the on the canvas. I don't care how dark or light it is, really. I just want something at the background. We'll do a little bit of, oh, we'll just swirl some paint in here and we'll, we'll blend it out a little bit. And that's really by, I use probably too much blue. But for today, I don't care. This is about grass. It's not about what the painting looks like. But let's at least make it look something. There we go. We'll put it a little darker up there. A bit more. Oh, it's bright. This is phthalo blue. I mean, Again, this is not the purpose of the painting. All right, just wanted a little bit there. And I'll blend it a little bit with a big two inch here. Start down with the, the lighter stuff and blend up. And what that does is allow your brush to stay a little clean before it gets really dirty. Oop, got a hair? And that's, that's all I need. That's all I need for right now. That's all I need. So what we could do, real quick, and I'll show you my palette in just a second. There's nothing really, there's sap green, phthalo blue, and some cad yellow, because I don't want to use too much. Uh, I'd encourage you to use more than just cad yellow when you do grass, but for me today, that's all I'm going to use. And I'm going to make a little color up here. Really dark, just have something. I've got my palette here. You can see the colors. There's the three of them. Phthalo blue, sap green, cad yellow. Okay, I'm taking some phthalo blue and some sap green and mixing them together. Okay. Let's just imagine maybe that there's a little or a big foothill right here. Something. I'm just tapping that on. Reload the brush. Anytime you load that brush, put that in there and bounce it on your palette or your palette paper, whatever you've got. And then if you're doing like a little foothill, give it a little scoot. Just like, just a little scoot. And what that does is loads a lot of paint right on the top of that brush. Let's bring another foothill maybe. Right here. Now I guess if we're being realistic here, we could say this is a little grass, right? Because all these foothills are trees or grasses whatever you want to go on you can always I know I'm not I said I wasn't really worried about let me adjust that camera just a bit I wasn't really worried about what the painting looks like as much as just doing a couple different types of grass but I could throw these if these are really far away you can barely pick up those little tree trunks just like that There we go. You get little trees. You can pick them up a little more if you think. This, what you don't want to do is go or like this way. It'll look like you're, you know, got a hurricane going on or something. That'll give you a little indication of how to do that. And then if we wanted to, we could even do this. Darken this one up just a tad. And maybe throw throw some of those in there it's whatever and like I said for today it doesn't really matter and then what I'm going to do is clean my brush I'm going to clean my brush by just going side to side here on the canvas and I'm not worried what color it is really it's either going to be blue green or yellow that's all I've got on the palette so we'll just throw some of that on here I've got a little dry down here on me this is just clean the brush as much as it is anything right now all right so folks have always asked how I do my grass I don't know why I do mine kind of like Bob does it most of the things I do are like Bob let's pull a little bit of that down maybe for a little reflection doesn't have to be much my water is so dark there anyway doesn't matter all right now, I'm going to take, let me get my palette so you guys can see it. 
And I'm trying to be really close to the screen so you guys can see this. Back it up just a tad. Sorry for the jerkiness there. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to take some blue and some green and mix up another color that's similar to those foothills. A lot of blue. And I'm using a 2 inch now because I prefer the 2 inch. Even though this is an 11 by 14 little bit of canvas I've got up here. I still like the 2 inch brush. It allows you to move around the canvas a lot quicker um, and, and get a painting done a lot quicker. Just smacking that paint in there. And let's imagine that we've got something else here. Um, we'll leave a little bit of water maybe, but we've got, there we go, hold that so it doesn't, the noise doesn't kill us. Put a little dark down here just to show you really quick. These are little quick tips and hints and things that I do. They're not meant to be full paintings or anything. This one a little dark down there, but I did not put a lot of paint. And I don't mind if I see a little brighter spot in there and a little darker spot there. And, you know, that's good. That is really good. Sorry for the banging. Okay. So we've got that. And again, I don't intend for those colors to be realistic as much because on my camera it looks like they're super dark. They're not quite that dark. All right, so people wanted to see how I do grass. We'll use a clean brush. I could use the dirty one, but I'm going to clean. All right, I clean two inch. And now I'm going to go into some cad yellow. That color right there. And pull, my cad yellow is really thick, so what I'm going to have to do... Get some of that cad yellow and a touch of green, just a touch. Maybe too much. But see how dry it is? So, what I've got is my liquid white. Okay. I'd encourage you not to use thinner for this because it can get really messy. And just barely get you just a touch of. I'll show you how much I'm going to use. It's too much. You can always rake it back off. Something like that on your brush, whether it's a one inch, two inch, or what. I'll add that to my paint and see how that lightened it up. Lightened it up. Maybe just touch. Maybe a touch of blue. There we go. Really, it really brought that paint down to where this is your thick paint. This is my thin paint. The golden rule that Bob always told us was that a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. Not vice versa. So you got to make sure you get your paint consistency right. Okay. There we go. And again, I would encourage you to use most of your yellows. Maybe a little bit of red sometimes in your grass. But for today, I'm just using CAD. Push up. And I get that little ridge of paint on my brush. And then all I'm going to do is tap, 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 tap. And I'm going right outside that. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. And then add that little highlight of grass. Let's come over here a little bit more. And don't, don't let your brush slide. Okay, you just really touch, touch. And if you've got your paint then down, um, it should come right off there. Should just come right off. And sometimes, just so you know, sometimes you don't even have to thin the paint. A lot of times the yellow, the cad yellow, especially if you're using Bob's paint, is thin enough to where you should not need to thin it back down. I also want you to notice how I'm leaving a lot of dark still showing, not covering that whole thing up. But I'm really just tapping that in there, pushing up at the end, okay, pushing up at the end, and then and just, and just maybe, maybe right there. There's some grass. I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. And you can go back and just kind of play with it a little bit. So that's kind of how I do the grass with the one or the two. I'm using the two, same method with the one inch brush. You just don't cover as uh, big an area as you're going along. Let me tilt that camera down just a bit. Okay, so there's grass like that. Now, some people say, man, I wish, people always ask me, your grass looks so bright. I've got it kind of dark, but let's brighten that grass up anyway. I'll take a little bit more and being very careful, just a touch more of the liquid white and I'm going to grab a little cleaner area of that cad yellow. OK, 
Okay, so it makes a little lighter color on there. I don't know if you guys can see that. A little lighter. This would be like a highlight. So maybe maybe it hits a little a little bit, and then we'll always kind of blend it back. A little bit brighter right there. Well, maybe the, maybe the, if you know, I'd put a brighter sky in here, make a little more sense. But you can always go back and brighten. Maybe, 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 maybe up here at the top, it'd be a little brighter. Who knows? It's wherever. Hope you guys can see that. But you got to be careful. Eventually, if you use too much of that liquid liquid white, it will get super muddy on you. Now, what also you can do is if you're cleaning your brush a lot and you dry it out really good, you'll still have enough thinner residue to thin down the paint usually. But I think this makes... I always think this makes the grass kind of stick up and, and pop and and do all and this is kind of tappy grass is what I would call this. This is not a pushing up grass or anything like that. So that's kind of how I do a little tappy grass. Uh, now another thing that you could do if I've got my knife sitting here somewhere. What we could do is um, just make a whole painting out of this if we really wanted to. I've got a fan brush here and go into some of those dark colors. Blue and green. Remember, I only got three colors here. Blue and green. Well, one more thing we could do real quick. Is I could, one thing we could do is I could take a little liquid white and show you guys this. Pick up the palette. I'm bad to not hold the palette. It just gets in my way. Especially if I'm trying to videotape something. Smash that liquid white out. Just like you would if you were painting a mountain. And get you a little bit on there. Maybe it's too much. Just get a little bit. And we could go back in here and I put us a little water line by just kind of sawing and, and pushing down a little bit. We've got a canvas up here. Let's just do a whole painting real quick. Even though I intended just to show you, um, just to show you the uh, way to put grass on a canvas. Again, just keep that water line level. It doesn't matter how it looks, but it would look weird if you did that. Okay, don't do that. Unless you want to. It's your world, so, I mean, I can't get on to you. I've done that. I just go in there and fix it. I'll just scrub it back out with my knife, my knife staying horizontal to the canvas, not vertical. Always keep it horizontal. There's a little bit of water on there. Got my fan brush here. Just load up some of that paint. And remember when you're loading a fan brush up for trees or whatever, just kind of load it like this. Load it on both sides, pulling both sides through the paint. Both sides through the paint, keeping it dark because these are evergreens. We'll do a couple of evergreens here. All right, we want one right here. Just make a little line by touching. I usually don't touch it all the way down, but you can. Oh, we'll just do down trees. Keep your brush kicked over, load it up nice and full. Touch and push down. Touch and push down. You go left to the right. Okay? And reload. Go right and then left. Doesn't matter. You can always fill in. We'll let that one come into our grass somewhere about right there. Maybe another one over here. Maybe he's a taller one. And we'll do an up tree. That was a down tree because they're pushing down. These are up trees, same kind of way, but you just kind of take the brush, touch, touch, light touch at the top, and then you're going to start pushing up. Pushing up, pushing up, flip it over. But if you notice, I'm using mainly the corner of that fan brush. I'll reload, got to keep it nice and full of paint. Another golden rule, or at least one that should be, is you got to have paint to paint. 
I'm just kind of pushing up and going side to side, keeping more my middle there, killing the grass that we spent so much time on, right? That's okay. I'll show you what we'll do there for that. There's that. And then we would take our brush, wipe it off on a paper towel, grab some of that liquid white that I've been using, get a little bit on your brush, and go up here to the yellow again. And that yellow and the green, or the blue and the green that are in my brush already, coupled with the yellow, gives me a really pretty evergreen color. I like to put a little blue in my yellow and green when I'm highlighting trees, because I like a blue or evergreen. And then a green, um, yellow evergreen. Sometimes they look a little too yellow to me. All right, we'll do this guy. I'll probably missed my mark there. We'll just touch, touch, oh, touch. Got a little much there. Just touch. And you're just kind of bouncing back and forth here. Mainly focusing on, come on down here just a little bit. Mainly focusing on the right side of the tree because I think my son's over there. Or at least that's what I'm going to tell you guys. All right, and then we'll do the other one. And you notice I didn't cover all the uh, the dark up on my tree. That's one of the most important things. You'd rather have a silhouetted tree than to have one that's completely highlighted. It just won't look right. And I'm not going to worry about my uh, trunks in these today. You can always go back. And, and on these, you're just kind of putting some right on top. Kind of pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. I always like up trees. Kind of my favorite. There's a big up tree. And now we've got to fix a couple little things. We've got a super easy painting. And had I known I was going to do a whole painting, it wouldn't have made the sky that dark. I was just going to show kind of do tappy grass, but it happens. Sometimes the painting comes out of it. Albeit not a great one, but one. And I'm just going to clean up here where I've got my tree, kind of covering up my grass a little bit. Kind of set that back down. Maybe there's a little bit of grass there, like that. And again, if we wanted to, we can always take a little bit of liquid white, a little bit of our yellow. And I'm not showing it on my palette because I've already done that. Maybe there's a little bit that comes out right there, like that. Watch your angles. But there is a entire painting done in just a few minutes. Again, it's not a great one, but it's a fun one, and it's a good way just to practice. Um, that took hardly any time. If I hadn't been talking, you know, that would have taken maybe maybe ten minutes at the most. Probably not even that long, especially if I've been paying attention. And I do think we need a little, a little stick tree or so here. Thin it down with thinner. Maybe one more or two more. Just kind of let that come out and just pull. And if you thin your paint well with a liner brush, it should just come right off with no pressure. Again, let the brush kind of drive and go where it wants to because trees don't all grow straight. Trees don't all have, um, let's put one right here, right in the middle. I like that one. Something like that, maybe there's a little arm there that even goes out like that. And we put a little bit there. And if we had to again, always remember anything can be fixed. Knock that one down a little bit. And there you go, folks. There is a super easy, super easy way to do tappy grass. And thanks for watching. If these are helpful, these little quick tips things, I didn't mean for this one to be 20 minutes long, um, let me know. But again, tappy grass is nothing more than just getting your paint consistency right and just touching the base paint. And if you've got the consistency right, 
it will come right off there and it'll make these nice little areas here. Now there's other ways to do grass. There's, you can do a fan brush, you can push up with a two inch brush and I'll show those, but this is just for tapping. We'll call this tapping grass. All right guys, take care.